So this is your first year in Congress. Yeah. How has it been? Uh, great. Um, and, I, and people will say, come on, it's so much travel, it's so much back and forth. Um, but you know, when we run for office, we know the job that we're getting into, and um, I think it's been great. What are ways um, that the federal government can help with the homelessness crisis that is happening in the state? We know that, that people will experience, in, experience homelessness, sometimes often youth. Um, there's a high drug addiction in the state. Mental health crisis is real, and we have to address those. How we can get our funding back here in order to uh, supportive housing, transitional housing. And you touched a little bit on um, addiction when it comes to homelessness. Measure 110 um, is in Oregon. What are your thoughts on Measure 110? Do you think it should be repealed? Is there any other um, addiction efforts that you think could be better than Measure 110? Well, certainly it's not just me who believes 110 has been um, a failure, quite frankly. Um, but we need to come up with a solution. I've asked the governor to repeal this or partial repeal. That's what the voters want. It's been shown in polling. They, enough's enough. So I'm looking forward to working with her office. I'm looking forward to working with local electeds to get it handled because uh, people are suffering. You voted in favor for this inquiry into President Biden. Um, kind of tell me a little bit about why you voted um, for this impeachment inquiry and what you're hoping to come out of it. Yeah, the question, there was some confusion about, is it an impeachment or the inquiry? I think it's just an inquiry. Okay. Uh, I am not for the impeachment vote as if it was to happen today. I think the answers need to be, or the, the questions need to be answered. And that's exactly what those committees are doing. And my colleagues are asking those questions. First, I'd just like to ask your opinion on abortion. Um, I know it's a very divisive topic right now, especially in Congress. What is your stance on it? Yeah, uh, it doesn't have to be divisive or somebody afraid to talk about it. You know, I'm a woman, I'm a mom, I've raised two, like again, two girls, I know what it, it means to carry life. Uh, but it's been brought back to the states, and uh, that's what the Dobbs decision did, and it should be held within those states, and let the states decide um, and have access. So anything that comes to a federal level on the floor, um, I will refer back to the states. And do you agree with how Oregon State is handling that topic? Yeah, for sure. Oregon needs to decide what they want, that there's access. And they have codified that in law, that they want access uh, to reproductive health care. Um, and as long as Oregonians speak up about what they want, that's what I'll stand by. And um, I guess sort of a last question here yeah. for voters. Uh, will you be coming back to Central Oregon anytime soon? Can we expect you here? Of course. Mm -hmm. uh, it's part of my district. I think last, uh, this whole year, we have been here oh, 10 or 12 times. Uh, I try to come home every weekend. When I look at the cases that we closed, 486 cases closed, $521,000 returned to Oregonians, 19,953 letters and emails sent to constituents, 13 bills introduced, and 175 bipartisan bills. So I'm listening to the constituents, and I'm doing the hard work. Um, and, and, and being held accountable is important to me because I hold people accountable. Um, I love this job, and I'll continue to be accessible to everybody. Well, great. Thank you so much yeah. again for sitting down and doing this interview with us. Yeah. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you, Isabella, and I'm glad that you're in this business. <laughs> thank you. you. Job. Thank you thank for having you. me. Thank you. Thank you so much. It.